Hi, thanks for joining our session. Today, we are going to talk lessons learned from the utilization of machine learning pipelines in production environment. First of all, let us introduce ourselves. I'm Kyosuke Hashimoto. I'm a research engineer at Hitachi, and I'm interested in developing AI solutions with open source software such as Kubeflow and Kedro. And also, I'm interested in public clouds such as AWS and Microsoft Azure. Hi, I'm Masahiro Ito. I work at Hitachi as a software engineer. I'm responsible for leveraging open source software related to big data and AI. I've been developing data lakes and data pipelines using Apache Hadoop, Spark, HBS, Kafka, and more. Now, I'm developing MLOps solutions for customers who are going to build enterprise systems. These are the outline of our talk. Our presentation is in four parts. First, we will introduce our business and explain the challenges of our machine learning projects. Next, we would like to talk about the development process of executable ML codes in production by Kedor. In part 3, we will give some discussion about the lessons learned from the project. Finally, we will give a brief summary of what we have covered. Okay, let's move on to the introduction. To begin with, I'm going to talk about our motivations to focus on machine learning. Machine learning technology is applied in various industries, such as IT, energy, manufacturing, and city development. Our company Hitachi has a lot of products and services in these industries. When we applied ML from experiment to production, we faced many gaps between data science and software engineering. So our challenge was how to move ML from experimental to production. I'll talk about job specialization in machine learning projects. Most of the machine learning projects consist of three steps. The first step is proposal. In this step, salespersons or consultants suggest how to solve a customer's problem by data analysis. The second step is experiment. In this step, data scientists train ML models and generate logics by Jupyter Notebook in experimental environment. In many cases, they have good mathematical skills, but they are not good at production-level software engineering. The third step is production. In this step, software engineers will implement logic from scratch for production environment, based on the result of data scientists' experiments. I'd like to talk about an issue and the hypothesis for applying logic into production environment. The issue is that it takes a lot of effort to implement the logic and the test codes from, from scratch in production environment. So, so we thought we could reduce these efforts by refactoring the Jupyter Notebook logic and converting them into production codes. In this presentation, we will fo focus on how to transform logics from such refactored notebooks. I'll explain the gaps between experimental and production environment. There are three gaps that may make logic re-implementation diff difficult. The first gap is logic modularity. In the experimental environment, Data scientists write logic such as data preprocessing, model training, and evaluation in the same notebook. But in the production environment, we, we need to execute model training, evaluation, and inference 
specify tree. The second gap is flexibility in data source. In the experimental environment, data scientists load small data sets, such as CSV files from local storage. But in the production environment, we need to load large data sets from object storages, data warehouses, or our rational databases. The third gap is logic scalability. In the experimental environment, data scientists train ML models on local machines using small data sets. But in the production environment, we need to train a lot of models with large data sets and execute inference in, in parallel. Let's talk about our challenges towards production environment. There are three challenges to transform logics in Jupyter Notebooks to, ex to executable codes in production environment. Firstly, we need to pick up the parameters and outputs from, from the notebooks to achieve logic, logic majority. However, this is difficult because multiple outputs and parameters referred by, by other cells are packed in a, in a single cell. Secondly, we need to modify dataset loading logics since the system specifications have not been determined under the experimental environment. Thirdly, we need to make some logic scalable to handle large dataset. There are several popular open source frameworks to decompose complex logics into simple procedures. We use a similar framework called Kedro for these logic transformations for production environment. Kedro is a especially popular framework among data scientists, since it enables integrating popular tools such as Jupyter Notebook. From the comparison below, we consider Kedro is suitable for overcoming the three challenges. So we tried Kedro in our machine learning project to modify logics for production environment. Here is the overview of validation scenario and its target system. The goal of this ML system is to classify the condition of machines for maintenance recommendation. In this scenario, engineers modify notebook calls generated by data scientists to production calls. The input data for ML model is sensing the data of machines. And the output of ML model is machine's condition. The, ta the target production ML system consists of training evaluation and inference part. First, the, M the training system trains ML models from sensing data. Then, the evaluation system evaluates the tra trained models. After that, the best model is deployed into the, the inference system. And the inference system predicts the machine condition from new sensing data. The predicted machine conditions are used for maintenance recommendation and other applications. Next, we are going to explain how we develop executable machine learning codes in production by Kedro. Through transforming logics into system executable codes by Kedro for production environment, we try to solve three challenges below. First challenge is logic modularity. In order to pick up outputs and parameters from single cells in Jupyter Notebook, we decompose complex logics into a set of functions and data processing flows by Kedro. This time, we call this procedure pipelining. Second challenge is flexibility in data source. In order to modify logics to load dataset corresponding to the system specification change, we replace decomposed logics which this time we call them nodes, at the type of dataset changes for modifying data loading logics. 
third challenge is logic scalability. In order to modify some logics to finish in reasonable time for larger data set, we execute independent nodes in parallel by using Kendra's function. This is the process overview of conversion from experimental logics into executable codes for production environment. We transformed cells into nodes and connect nodes to develop pipelines in following steps. Firstly, in logic modularity, we transformed pipelines in Kedro style. Secondly, in flexibility in data source, we applied data catalog for data and model loading function. And thirdly, in logic scalability, we remo removed loops inside nodes. By these solutions, we could easily transform logics for production environment by Kedro. First solution, transforming pipelines in Kedro style consists of following four steps. First one is generating project template by Kedro, and the second one is ex extracting definition of nodes from Jupyter Notebook. And third one is adding nodes not in the Jupyter Notebook, and then we can connect nodes to develop pipeline. Through these four steps, we transformed cells into nodes in Kedro style. From next slide, we are going to explain these steps in detail. First step is to generate project template. When we started to use Kedero by typing comments Kedero in it, following directories and files are generated automatically. We use some of those files afterwards. Firstly, we define nodes in nodes.py and describe definition of pipelines in pipeline.py, which is located in the right side of this slide. And also we use catalog.yaml, which is on the left side of this slide, to use solve challenge number two, that is flexibility in data source. Next, we extract logics from Jupyter Notebook and transform them as a nose of pipeline. For example, we have training logics in Jupyter Notebook here, and then we define it as a node in a part of pipeline.py and also a part of node.py. Next, we added node not in Jupyter Notebook. Before connecting nodes, we found a node for inference pipeline is missing in production system, which is post process. In Jupyter Notebook, training, evaluation, and the inference are mixed without any categorization in single notebook. However, when we develop a pipelines, training, evaluation, inferences are separated, and we could find missing part easily. Post process is defined as follows in node.py and pipeline.py. We input inference result as arguments of function and output results as we could input them to other applications for maintenance recommendation. Next, we connect nodes to develop pipelines. Since input and output of logics in notebooks are not clear, we had to clarify them to develop pipelines. Kedro offers simple and easy to understand way to define pipeline and node as simple plain Python codes. In notebooks, inputs and outputs of each logics are not clear, and then dependencies among cells is not clear. Also, recovery policy is not clear when something go wrong with existing notebooks. On the other hand, by using pipelines in Kedro, since flow is modularized by nodes, we could make inputs and outputs, dependencies clear. Also, we could design recovery policy for every node. For example, we could connect nodes in pipeline.py, which is shown in left codes, and develop training pipeline like right figure. Next, we are going to explain how we solve challenge number two, which is flexibility in data source. We apply data catalog function for data and model loading function. Kedro supports declarative definitions for specifying data source and reader writer in separate configuration paths, which is called data catalog. By using data catalog, we can check existence of data and apply embedded wrappers for read and write data, which enables us to switch data source by replacing single configuration file, which is catalog.yaml without editing the definition of nodes. 
Developer can decouple location of data sources, type of data source from implementation of the core logics. How to apply data catalog in data and model loading function is consisted of these two steps. First step is analyzing logics in Jupyter Notebook, and second one is decoupling data loading and converging codes. First step is to analyze logics in data loading logics implemented in Jupyter Notebook. This is an example of data loading logic. As you can see in this example, data loading logics number one, number two, and conversion logic number three are mixed in one loop. When data source is changed in production environment, analyzing and changing logics are difficult. So we should decouple these two different types of logics into another file. And this is how we decouple data loading and converging code into different configurations and codes. Firstly, we apply data catalog and describe data loading function in catalog.yaml. And secondly, we re-implement loading and converging codes in node.py and pipeline.py. Third challenge, to solve logic scalability, we remove loop inside nodes extracted from Jupyter Notebook. There are some logics which have loop insights such as training logic and evaluation logic for testing many algorithms or datasets. In experimental environment, these loop structures may be useful but in production environment, this causes the delay to scale out pipelines. In order to finish completion in reasonable time, we should remove loops inside nodes, explicitly express loop structures in the pipeline flow, and execute nodes in parallel by single command option. We remove loops of each node as follows. Please look at the left figure. As you can see, uh, before refactoring, training and evaluation has loop at the number of locations, which indicates that increasing the number of locations accompanies delay of wall processing time. On the other hand, by removing loops of each node, which is indicated in the right figure, we could distribute it processing at the increase of locations. Now, we discussed the effect of utilizing Kedero in our scenario. These are good points of Kedero, which we learned in our validation scenario. Firstly, we could easily develop structured pipelines by simple definition of functions and pipelines in Python without learning any special framework to overcome challenge number one. Secondly, we could easily modify pipelines by separating codes which were in different environment and scenarios and modifying configuration files to overcome challenge number two. Thirdly, we could scale out logics and run them in parallel with simple command option, which is related in challenge number three. This is a point to consider we learned in our scenario. We believe transforming logics by Kedero reduces much effort than refactoring logics from scratch. But transforming logics still takes decent costs. As a future, we should evaluate those quantitative costs. This is our idea of reducing costs to transforming logics from Jupyter Notebook. We think developing tool for data scientists to tag cells and generate pipelines and functions should be the possible solution. For instance, Kale allows us to transform logics in notebooks into machine learning pipeline automatically by adding tags and of dependencies. Kale stands for Kubeflow Automated Pipelines Engine, and it has annotation feature for tagging cells in Jupyter Notebook and transforming cells for nodes of Kubeflow pipelines. We expect those integration is applied to Kedero as well. Finally, we wrap up our presentation. This time, we tried to apply Kedro to accelerate our machine learning project from experiment to production. We have found that Kedro enables more efficient implementation of production machine learning systems than re-implementing them from scratch. 
Schedule enables manual logic conversion from Jupyter Notebooks to production-level structured machine learning pipelines, which are easy to develop, modify, and scale out. Future works are as follows. Firstly, we need to evaluate the effect of saving costs or transforming logics from experiment to production. Also, we should consider more automated solutions such as scale or those transformation. This is the end of our presentation. Thanks for joining us. We are happy if you are interested in our presentation. Thank you very much.